Okay. Now, while I say you can edit it to the snaggle, this actually works for um, any other avatar you have, not just the snaggle. But the snaggy is the one I have at the moment, so that's what I'm going to be using. Um, so, yeah. So, we have our hair, and we're going to rotate it so that it's facing the right direction. And you usually do that by pressing R, Z, negative 90, and it snaps to where it's supposed to be. Sometimes you gotta move it over. <laughs> and we can just put it down on our snaggle head. And line it up the way it's supposed to be. Or at least however we want it to be. Whichever pleases you. There's no rules here. Okay, so I think like that will look good. I'm not sure. I'm not used to having such extreme hairstyles. Alright, so I guess like that is fine. Um, if you want to see what it's like when it's textures, uh, you can go, let's, let's go back to the layer with the hair. And we're going to press textured mode. And then we're going to press tab. And we're going to press A and select everything. Then we're going to go to open, and we're going to go to the folder, our project folder, which was hair stuff. And we're going to pick the red texture that was on there, that way we can see it. So then we have our red hair so we can look at it this way. But the problem with this is that the snaggy uh, texture doesn't always come in. So I just, when it does this, just put that uh, generated map on there. That way... It's everywhere. Let's press A. Generated map. There we go. That way we, we have something. I mean, if you have a snaggle skin, you can just put it on there as well. But I don't right now. So we have our hair, and we positioned it on the head the way we like it. If we wanted to do a little bit more tailoring to it, you can press, the, click on the hair. And um, I like to use the grab vertex and we can enable the soft editing or proportional editing press G that way you can set the field of influence that's here and once that's set you can just push and pull on it and make it so that it fits your head the way you think it's supposed to or how it looks supposed to look in the poster whichever comes first Oh, let's see this. all this hair in there that I didn't even see. Okay, so I guess it's in a place that it looks right. If you want, you can just click on it again. And you can press G as well, and then you can move it to how you like it all right so we got the tailoring done the basic tailoring so now it fits the head um we should address the issue that was at hand the first time which was the when you move your mouth i think no no, no. this hair is fine so this is just basic tailoring um, of your hair so yeah we've tailored it to where it fits the hair now let's export it so that we can wear it in second life um, so what we need to do next is click in the hair and then we need to click on the modifier tab so this little wrench over here and where it says armature the modifier that should be on this hair should say armature modifier and you're going to change it from whatever it says to the name of the snaggle skeleton so in this case the snaggle skeleton is called let's see it's the obvious avatar skeleton so we want to take our hair and let's move it so you can see that it, it works <laughs> so when we take our regular skeleton we press r and we move it you see it doesn't work so when we click on it now and change it from avatar 2 to just plain old avatar you see when we move our skeleton now, it fits. 
all right so there you have hair that has been fitted to your dome it's no gap it's covering everything all right it's time for us to extract it but before we do so there's something very critical that i absolutely forgot about until just this moment <laughs> i'm so sorry before you go and export your hair you're going to need to separate it because sometimes um, when you bring in hair it can be really big and you'll get a lot of errors so the first thing we need to do is to break it up plus it's easier to add the texture to it when it's in separate pieces so click on your hair and you press tab and then you press A and then you press P and then you separate by materials and once you separate by materials you'll see that this is uh, the part that's solid and then there's going to be the part with the fringe so that makes it easier to texture it and know which part goes to what so now we have to do next is to press A and select it all and this is one of the main reasons why I say put stuff on its own layer because you can just press A and select it all rather than oh no I accidentally, select the I accidentally selected the avatar nope press A and you can select all the hair at once so yeah A and select all and then we're gonna go file export uh, avastar and I'm going to find my hair folder I'm just gonna name this red dot day oh red one dot day and an export I might get the nag screen for it being really high and if it doesn't upload we'll show you how to fix that so let's just wait for it to export press pause and wait for that to clear up <laughs> I do think it's kind of funny that whenever I press pause that's when everything just goes like it's a shy guy like, don't look at me I'm loading okay so we export it let's import it into second life so we have our hair so you can see what it looked like not fitting so let's try it on so we're gonna go to build and then upload and then mesh who is that and why are they calling to me uh, so we're gonna see red one and wait for it wait for it I'm a little worried about that yellow text right there Oh dear, I crashed it. Uh, let's see if it loads. I'm going to pause it. <laughs> well, it came in. Jeez, is it heavy. I wonder what's up with that triangle, too. Alright, well, let's upload it and see what happens. I'm just going to turn this to low. And now to lowest. And then we're going to hit skin. Wait, wait. See what Second Life has to say about that. It's probably going to take a second. Because how heavy this is but we'll talk about reducing that in a second it's just taking forever to calculate it isn't it all right so i'm gonna pause it real quick and see what happens okay i waited quite a while and it still hasn't done it and that's not good i mean it's kind of a smack my finger shame on you zero because you know that is way too high to put on somebody's head even though it did just pop up now so i'm gonna upload it just to be naughty but we don't want hair that big uh that heavy so we're gonna go back and take care of it i'm just gonna upload it right now because i'm curious as to uh what happens when you let it do it like how bad does this affect your uh, complexity level or whatever? So, for science! <laughs> well, while that one is burning up my second life, I'm going to go back in the blender and we're going to make another version that's not as heavy as this. So, let's go back in the blender. And we're going to select our hair. And we're going to join it back. Because it's a lot easier to do it uh, in one file swoop than to do it each piece and hope for the same thing so once we have our hair selected we're going to go over here to our modifier tab and we are going to select the decimate option now as you can see it has a face count here and I'm 
it's pretty high. So what we need to do is decimate the amount of triangles and junk in his hair. So this is a good reason why you may want to have your uh, textured on <laughs> as well as your model. So we're going to, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. All right, so make sure you have your texture on because this will allow you to see what it looks like with while it's textured and stuff. And you want to have a front view and we're going to create another window real quick. All right, no, we're not going to create a window. We're just going to use our other window. And we're going to have a front view and a back view so we get everything set up straight. So turn it up. Jeez. Shading, display textures. All right, so we have a front view, we have a back view, we have a shaded, and we're just going to start decimating. And we're going to stop right before it starts looking wonky. So keep your eye on it and slowly decimate, but keep your eye on the, make sure to look over here at the mesh. So we decimated it like more than half already and it still holds up its original look. So we can hit apply. You see the try count and everything else went down a lot. Uh, if you want to decimate it some more, you can, but you don't want to decimate it too much because you don't want it to turn into just a triangle. So, it's like that. See what I mean? Just keep your eye on it. See if it makes any changes. So far, it's not changing. Oh, wait. Alright, I think that's still good. We got it down dramatically. Alright, so let's leave it like that. I don't want to decimate it anymore. So we're going to do this. I'm going to press, like we did before, and separate it. Yeah, the the topology is going to go to hell for this. But hey, that try count is going to go down. So you can still do it. So we're going to separate by material again. And we're going to press A and select it all. And then export again. Um, so we're going to documents, here stuff. And the name is red 2 and then export it. So you see it's going a lot faster than it did before. We don't have to pause it at all. And we didn't get a nag screen. Um, so let's go back into Second Life. Uh, let's take off the original. And let's put on the huge one. See what it does to our complexity. It's taking forever to load. It's never a good sign. <laughs> Alright, so I want to upload it here. It didn't do that much damage to our complexity, but we did get this wacky triangle, which I have no idea what that's about. Okay, no. Alright, so let's take this hair off real quick. And let's put on our regular hair. Hopefully there's no triangle. So red two. Alright, no triangle this time. And that's a little more reasonable. So we're gonna turn low and low as to zero like we always do. Add our skin weight. Calculate weights and fees. Look how much faster and lighter that is. 13L. One prim. Good, good, good. And then we slap that on. And there we have our hair, like, fitted to our snaggle. Um, so what I'm going to do now is add the texture. Because I'm trying to save money here. I mean, if only some people would donate, then I would have more spending money. Just saying, y'all. Select the hair and the fringe. Hit OK. Let's see. Select. Let's see. Let's select the solid first. Then we select what I assume is the fringe. Okay, so I think I may have done that backwards. This might be the solid. And this might be the fringe. There we go. You have your fancy hair fitting on your head. And it all looks great. I think. <laughs> 
I'm not sure how it was supposed to look, and I think I may need to pull it back or up a little more. Maybe that's what I'm used to seeing it up here, so it doesn't quite look right to me. But I think that's what the creator was going for with this hairstyle, or at least what I was asked to do. Alright, so once we have that all loaded in, we can now move on to the other solution. I mean, <laughs> the other problem. Ugh. <laughs> My words are gone. Alright. I feel like I need glasses with this hair. Doesn't that look like the sassy business girl hair? Anyway. We have now completed one of the three mesh errors that we have with rigged mesh hair for a snaggle or a slash furry avatar. The hair not fitting. So I hope that helped you out with this. But we are now going to move on to our other two errors and um, show you how to fix that. So... See you in the next videos.